Okay, I finished erasing the uh, pieces for the hands. So now I am ready to start texturing with this smart material, but I'm going to make one slight adjustment to it before we tackle the hands. You see here. So I'm going to go into the editor and I'm going to change the condition mask of the main layer to be less on convex and then I'll add in a texture for that. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Might shrink it a little bit. Then I'm also going to reduce the uh, the depth of these layers. And that way the uh, the hands will look a little bit more worn away because they've been grabbing onto various components. And I'll just save that. And I'll also put this on its own layer. Don't want to make that mistake again. Call this one hard black. And here we go, let's get painting. Also, in case you're wondering how I get the wireframe to show up here in the texture editor, you just click wireframe. It's especially useful if your shells are really close together and it might be a little difficult to tell when one shell ends and another begins. So for a lot of texturing when I'm in here, I'll make sure I have the wireframe on. And on that note, if you want the wireframe of your low poly model to show up in the 3D view, uh, you hit W and it'll pop up. Hit W again and it'll go away. All right. Now, while we're on this layer, I'm going to do a couple more things to it. So since these parts, uh, they are going to be grabbing the ship that you fly around in and they are the bits that do the most work, I'm going to add a little bit more wear to these, a lot of uh, scratches. So I'll just erase certain parts of the layer and now I'm going to be focusing on uh, working in the 3D view rather than the 2D view. So you see I can erase some and I'll just use some various alphas that I have in order to make it look a little bit more realistic and like it's been scratched. So these, this particular alpha set I actually downloaded from the 3D Co website. Uh, it's called Cracks and Wrinkles. Uh, and I will link to it in the description of this video. Uh, it's very, very useful. And there's, as you can see, a lot of them. So I'll just pick an alpha I like. And I want to make sure these stay kind of towards the uh, the edges, because that's where it's most realistic that they'd be applied. I go to my brush options, rotate it a little bit, a little bit less. So I'll take this one that looks kind of like a radial crack. Kind of apply it going that way. See a little scratches that kind of radiate outward from the tip of the jaw there. Do the same thing to the other side. And then maybe grab a few others and just wear those away like that. Also consider in areas like here, this particular part of the jaw is going to open and close a lot. So there would be a lot of scratches as it makes that movement. So I will It can be especially useful if in your brush options you have rotate along stroke. 
because this gives you more control over what direction you're actually um, drawing this in as opposed to having to keep on adjusting the brush rotation. Same thing to the other side. Then I'll do it to oh, some of these hands right here. So now I'm going to add some uh, sort of brushed steel look to the uh, the pistons and then also to uh, maybe to the teeth here. So I'll make a layer for that. And 3D Code actually happens to come with a smart material that works really well for this. If I go to metals and it's down towards the bottom a little bit, steel blade. You can see how you can see sort of the very narrow grooves that travel along the length of the piston. That's what we want, and we can even rotate it so it's exactly the right orientation. There we go, like so. There we go. And you see that looks a lot cleaner, it looks more like an actual piston. Very subtle change, but important nonetheless. Okay, so now that we've done that. Now it gets to, so we're nearly, we're getting pretty close to being finished here. So now, this is the fun part. Now I'm gonna add on a lot of uh, dirt and sludge that is built up on this thing over time. 